Hey everybody, it's Longrack from UnrealTech.net here again. Today we're going to look at some of the core features of C++ that's used by UE4 and its API so that we can get a background on things we need to know and things we should practice and what you can look into in more depth on your own time without me going into the core concepts of C++. So we're going to start by looking at functions and macros. Functions, because we don't want to copy and paste code and because they're key to programming, and macros because they're boilerplate that Unreal uses as a copy and paste function that we don't really need to know how it works, but we need to know where to place them and how to use them. So in our previous kind of intro volume zero lesson, we made our log transform class. Let's make a new class that's not really going to do anything, but it's going to be its own its own actor. So let's file new C++ class. Let's choose actor. That way we can spawn in the world if we need to, but we're just going to look more at programming practices here. So hit next and let's call this functions macros and create the class and it'll open up Visual Studio and then we can get started. So before we begin, make sure you have no compiler errors under compiler log in the message log so that we have no errors when it comes to our new class. That's in the log transform. In our theory, we have our functions macros actor class. So let's open that up and we'll open up the CPP and the header file and we'll get rid of the log transform for now. So we're just gonna look at some theory. So the reason we use functions and functions are defined here in the header definition files such as virtual void begin play that's a function virtual void tick that's a function that you're all aware with aware of and then we have uh, the actual function declarations the actual implementations here the reason we use functions is so that we don't have to copy and paste code if i was to write some code that said calculate this this value and i wanted to do it six times and i just pasted it you know six times that gets very very ugly and annoying and worse what if i wanted to say calculate and then let's say i had a bunch of parameters like five and six let's say i was calculating the sum of them if I wanted to do this, I would have to instead do, you know, my, var my variable equals 5 plus 6. And what if we do addition 500 times in our program? Well, it would be nice to have a function called calc sum that takes in, you know, those two variables and it gives back the sum aka a return value so that, that way it just prevents us from having code over and over and over and over and another great thing is when we call this function say calc sum five six we know that we're just going to get the answer to that and we don't have to see all the extra code that actually goes into this function you know blah 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 that's hidden somewhere else so it makes our our code cleaner and easier to read so that's that's a major reason that we use functions and you can call functions as often as you want so an analogy is let's say you are ordering something at a restaurant and this restaurant has uh, it's fast food it has the till clerk it has um it has you and it has the burger cooker so how we can look at this with functions is that you you are asking the till clerk okay I want I want a cheeseburger so you say you're gonna call the function give item cheeseburger and he's gonna say okay and then he's gonna call the function to the cook that says okay cook burger one so cook one burger and he'll simply just give a burger back to the till person and the till person simply gives the burger back to you instead of going all the way through and saying okay I'm gonna 
go to the till i'm gonna ask for a burger i'm gonna give them the money they're gonna go back they're gonna say okay we need a burger the burger guy's gonna say okay it needs one patty and two buns and onions it needs to cook for that's all hidden we just say boom 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 we're calling these functions and done deal and everyone gets returned what they want in the end or wanted so let's look at an actual example let's uh, let's save everything here Control S, it's got a star there. Let's just go file new project and it should open up in in here very quickly. Let's create a new C project just to look at some theory quickly. Visual C. Let's just make a console application. And we're just gonna put this in any folder. I'm just gonna go documents, Visual Studio Projects. I'm gonna go um UE4 one uh, funk mac that underscore theory and we're gonna call this um, we're gonna call it function theory so just something like that and you can give it a name like function theory and it's gonna be a win32 console application so hit OK yes we want to save our solution I guess I'll open the solution in here so let's we just want a console application everything's fine the way it is let's hit finish and let's get our main um our main setup here and it includes the standard header so nothing special just regular um regular c plus stuff and you can hit build build solution or f6 and it'll build it for you and run it. So build succeeded, everything's fine the way it is. So let's look at a function theory. So let's pound include, and these are called what's called a preprocessor directive. Let's include um, cmath.h. And that doesn't exist. Let's try C math. That's what I was looking for. All right. So we're going to include the standard C math library. So these preprocessor directives, what that's doing, and this relates to macros in a second. I'm going to tell you how, because what they're doing is basically these um, preprocessor directives um, are preprocessed before the, the actual code starts getting read line for line. So basically what happens is if one of these preprocessor directives says, okay, at line 110, insert this code because I put this macro here, then it's gonna do that before the program starts. And so a lot of these macros, like, so they're just boilerplate. They're, they're a preprocessor directive. When the compiler starts going through here to compile your code, it says, oh, this macro's here. It says we need to, you know, insert this code here. And it just saves you from having to do that with a simple, you know, insert code at line 56. Let's say that's what our macro's called. So that's, that's a preprocessor directive. So we're including the CMath uh, standard library. And it has a function called square root. So we can call um, cmath square root 5. And that will simply, if I get this right, there we go, only one colon. And so we want to print the result of my square. So what we're going to do is we're going to pound include another preprocessor directive where we are going to include IO stream, so input output stream. And so what that means is we can use the um, syntax standard double colon C out. You'll see it comes up. And then we can put in a string or anything else that works. So my square. So let's build and run this. So build succeeded. Now we can, oh, we can right click and build. Five, I believe, is the hotkey. So as you see, it came up very, very quickly. So, oh, let me have to go standard. 
Endel. Yes, that's very annoying. I need to uh, use a namespace, but that's fine. Uh, control F5. Yes, we're going to build it. So there we go. There's the square root. So this simple few characters here, square root 5, saves us from... Um, can we go to the actual go to definition saves us from all of this crap in here essentially we don't need to worry about C math at all it just simply does it for us and it returns the value we want so to a human finding the square root of some numbers are very easy but numbers like five are a lot harder and it's very easy to simply type in square root five so by creating functions that does all this calculating and stuff for us it allows us to make our code cleaner and allows us to abstract you may have heard of the word abstraction abstract away the actual the actual definition and the actual code the actual calculations away from what we're actually trying to accomplish so do we need to understand all the math between square root to call this? No, you could be you could be in grade school before learning square root and this would still work just fine. You still get the return value of square root five. So advantages to using functions, like I said, they abstract away a very uh, complex idea into a simple uh, method a routine that we can call at any time this makes the code that we need for whatever like I said say um, ordering a burger just a single line that we can um, call on the call is usually the program but it could be somewhere else too so functions also avoid repetition of code where it's not necessary sometimes yes you need to copy and paste or uh, use code over and over but when you're using stuff many times or you've got a function or you've got code that's many lines that can be used over and over again or you can pass arguments into that's a good time to use a function and it will make your code a lot cleaner and easier to read so let's look at printing or let's look at creating our own function so let's go down below Let's go void um, create person. Open close brackets. Open close curly curly brackets. And then in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go standard C out, and we're gonna do a tab. So that's backslash T, and then we're gonna do a smiley face, and then another tab, and then a new line. So essentially, it's just going to make a smiley face on one line. Very, very simple function. We could have just put it into main, but we have now created our own function. So if we wanted to print two people, all we have to do is type create person, semicolon, and then again, create person. And it saves us all this, all this, out, see, this output code. So let's let's run this and see what happens. Where do I have in here? Right, this has to be above because that's the way C plus plus works. So we get two two happy faces. We get two people, and we could even go a step further, and we could say, "Hi, I'm." person and then we can go we'll just say one and save however that gives us the ear that they're both person one put a space there so 
this brings us to the next thing. So yes, this makes it a lot easier. We just have to create persons instead of copy and pasting this code twice. Now that's kind of a dumb example because that's a very short amount of code, but it does make our main a lot easier to read. So now we bring up arguments. So if we change void, which means there is no return type, it just simply calls the code in here without doing anything else. It basically just, when it comes across create a person, it jumps to here, it does this line of code, then it comes and jumps to the next line. But if we change void to say, or if we leave it even and just simply put in an input called num people, and we'll make that an int, and then we'll say, hi, I'm person uh, num people. We'll put that variable in there. We can now say create person one and create person two. And now when we run this, we get, hi, I'm person one, hi, I'm person two. So we're feeding an argument in there. And we could go a step further and we could create a for loop for um, int i i is less than or equal to num people dot size or dot length or less than or equal to num people i plus plus and then we'll put our code inside of our for loop so notice how our function is getting more complicated but our int main remains the same so hi i am person and instead of num people we're just going to go i and we'll repeat this as many times as num people so now all we have to do is type in create person 2 and it's going to give us the same output Assuming I made no errors, which I did. Uninitialized local variable i for int i. Where is that? For int i. Oh, we're going to start equals zero. It's not initialized. Uninitialized. Always good to read your errors. i equals zero is where we're going to start. So control F5. As you see, well, I did something wrong. We get three people. It should be less than because it's zero based. So now with one line, we get hi, I'm person zero and hi, I'm person one. And if you want to go into, into being picky, you can go i plus one. And then you get, of course, hi, I'm person one, hi, I'm person two. And now by using that function, which has now gotten to a few lines and one argument, we can now create as many people as we want. So there's 10 people. So that shows you how one line can represent what would be, you know, probably 40 lines of code. So all you have to remember is your return type, your function name, your arguments, and your function body. Let's quickly look at return values using the sum uh, that I was talking about before. So let's make a function that returns an integer. So that's our return value. Remember your function, it goes return value, then function name. So this is going to be calc sums. And then your arguments. So we're going to go um, int1, int2. And then our function body goes right here and we're going to make these ints. So calc sum is just going to return. So if it's not void, we need a return statement. So return int one plus int two. So now what we can do is we can simply call calc sums, say, five and six like I showed you before and then we can standard see out 
and we'll just place that code in there. And as you see, we get 11, and I should have put a new line, but that's fine. So that shows you how a return value works. So very, very easy and very, very powerful. If you're not aware of how functions work already, and this was very basic to you, then I suggest you do a little bit of review because functions are gonna be your friend when it comes to programming in Unreal Engine 4. Let's, uh, let's look at some variables that are gonna become uh, very important in Unreal Engine 4. So we have the idea of just a regular variable. So if we said int my var1 equals one, so that's a variable and variables have scope. So this scope my var1 can be used in this function body here. So what if we put one up here and we said int local variable, you don't have to put the L, I just prefer var1 equals zero. This variable only exists in the scope of calc sums. So it is created here. And then once we exit calc sums, then L var1 is destroyed. It's no longer there. So that's what a scope is. It says where something exists essentially. And so when we talk about global variables, they exist over the whole program. So if we went up here and we went int my global var, and some people like to uh, prefix them with g underscore, um, and if we say it's equal to one, that integer can be used anywhere. So if I wanted to int main, your main thing, and I went int main var equals five, if I tried to use it in in calc sums and I went int sum var equals main var plus five, it's gonna say it's undefined. That's because it's out of scope. It's only in the main scope. So you cannot use it. But if we replace main var with our global variable, g underscore my global var, it works just fine because it's in the global scope. It's usable everywhere. It's created at the beginning of the program, so created, and it's destroyed at the end of the program. Now you have to be careful with global variables. You don't want, you only want to use them when absolutely necessary. Um, they use memory and they make things more confusing because that really doesn't show you where it's going to be used, for example. So um, global variables are usually at the top of a program, as you can see under my preprocessor directives, my include statements. We also have uh, local variables, and that's exactly what I showed you in our functions. These are all local variables. They're created inside the function, then they're destroyed. They're completely local. Now you can have variables that are local to a statement or a small method. For example, in void create person, int i is only is only um, only has scope in this for statement. If I tried to use it down here, i plus one, it's not gonna exist. You'll see it's undefined again. So it's only it's out of scope there. So it's created right here. So created here. I know that'll ruin my code, but and it's destroyed here after the for loop is done. So that's how a local variable works and that's how the scope of variables works in a nutshell as well we also have something called a static local variable so that works like global variables only they have a local scope as well so let's create a new function called void counter 
with no arguments, no return values since it's void. And let's create a static int um, counted. And let's initialize it to zero. And every time we run this program, let's go standard C out. We'll go counting. And then we'll put our static integer counted. And then we'll do actually just to keep it clean, a new line. So slash. In. So let's call counter and see what happens. And let's call it like three times or something. So because this is a local variable set to zero, you would expect to see counting zero, 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 because it's created it to zero, it prints out to zero, then it's destroyed and we call it again, it comes back here, it's set to zero again. So let's let's see what happens. As you see, that's what happens. We get counting zero, 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 because the local variable is reset back to it. But what's interesting now, that's how you would expect if we didn't have the static there. Now that we have the static, if we modify the variable in between these calls, so we're just gonna add a plus plus, which means it's gonna add one to it. You would expect, if we didn't have static there, I'll show you what happens. It'll be the same as before. We'll just get zero, 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 or counting one, 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 since we're adding one every time. So it'll be one, one, one. But if we make it a static variable, then it has global and local scope. So every time we count, every time we call it, it's, it's going to be initialized and created, but it won't be destroyed. So when we run it, we get one, two, three. So that's a way you can get rid of these global variables and put them into functions instead. Again, you should only use static local variables when needed. Uh, one last variable we should look at is constant variables. If we go something like const double pi equals 3.1415, this is a constant of type double named pi equals 3.1.4.15. Whatever it double ends up being. And we know pi isn't going to change. Pi never changes. So if we try to do something like um, standard C out pi plus 1 we're going to get an error. Or rather, we won't. But if we try, sorry, to, that works just fine. It's adding it. Um, we'll say temp var, and we'll go double temp var equals pi. Um, we'll go temp bar or instead rather we'll just see it we'll go like this we'll go pi plus equals five control f five you'll see it's given us an ear and that did not work exactly how I was looking. Um, when we could try to build it, but if we try to set pi, so if we say pi equals pi times five, you'll see you get an error pi you cannot assign to a variable that is a constant so because it's constant we cannot accidentally 
change this value. This is a good way to avoid what's called magic numbers that I went over before. If we're going to use a number, say, um, int uh, default health equals 100, if we know that it's always going to be 100, we don't want to accidentally change that, then we make it a constant. And that way it can't be accidentally changed like we just tried to do. So that's something very, very useful. Let's look at one more thing, and that is function prototypes. And that is um, delving into header files. So we would have to add a um, new header file and we'll just call it um, example.h, we'll add. So we have our header file here. So a function prototype is how we worked before when we defined our own function. Um, I think it was log temp or something in our UE4 project. It um, allows you to define a function without actually doing any code without putting the body in. So for example, um, in here we have, um, for example, calc sums. So how we would make that a function prototype in a header file, in a header file, sorry, would be int calc, sum, calc sums and then int int1, int, int2, just like that. And then, of course, the body is put in here, but what we do is we pound include um, example.h. And what that means is we can now use calc sums um, basically anywhere. So we put we put the we put the actual code in here, and we have the definition in here. And this may seem like extra work, but the reason that it's important is because this is how Unreal Engine Four uses uh, or does all its coding. It uses header and um, CPP files, your definition and declaration files. This keeps code separate because they're not going to be as simple as this. They're going to get very long and complicated and you want that all to be separate from in here. So I think I have gone over all of the important basics that we need for the next video. The one last thing, of course, is macros that we're going to go over very quickly. So we, we made a constant called pi up here that was 3.1415. What we can do is we can define a macro and you do that by going pound define and we're going to go pi and you usually use all caps for macros, in fact, I'm pretty sure always. And we're going to define pi to be 3.1415, um, whatever. So just like that. So this is another preprocessor defect, uh, preprocessor directive. What this is going to do is it's going to look for any instances of pi in your code, and it's going to replace it with that value. So if we um, get rid of this if we go pi down here using caps there is no variable pi there is no constant variable pi but we have that macro and so now when we run it we get our value so that's just how macros work in a very extremely small nutshell it's a literal that's exactly copy and pasted exactly where you define the name it's copy and pasted in all those locations so the preprocessor goes through all your code looks for any instances of in this example pi and 
it replaces it. So basically we do this because if we had something like say we used you know a million digits where many is a double will allow us that's pi two characters is easier to type and easier to look at and read than that entire thing but when we run this we still get our whole value it truncated a bit but that's fine so um use constant variables where possible but also use macros where possible because this prevents this prevents um accidentally changing values that shouldn't be changed and it also keeps your code clean you can also create uh macros with arguments so if we um said define and we said print uh line and gave it the um or we'll say print print a num print a number and we gave it the argument x we'll say what it does is going to be standard c out and all it's going to print out is the number x so what we can do now is we can call instead of st standard C out here we can just go print a num and we give it the argument 5 and now when we run this it prints out 5 so you can you can make very advanced macros and you can you can put them pretty much anywhere if we put them in our header file since it's included when we run it we still get it so this this tries I'm trying to show you the idea of you keep as much as you can away from your actual um, code to keep everything nice and clean um, so we put this macro for example in our header file and Unreal is going to use this a lot as you saw it in our first videos so um that's basically called an inline function um in a way because you have this tiny little i guess you wouldn't call it a function it's more of an inline statement an inline function is something we should probably uh, look at similar to um similar to macros um, and you usually only do this when they're very small, but if we do something like inline uh, inline int inline int um, let's say sum and we'll go int one int two, int int one int two and all it does is return uh, one plus two so we have this inline function that returns an integer called sum we should call this calc sum because sum is a is a word that's kind of reserved so now if we call calc sum five six and put it on a print okay i just made a big error it went int one so it gave it the literal number one i just changed it to a and b and we can put this back in our header file again to to reiterate to keep things as far away from your actual code as possible to keep things clean and tidy where it makes sense so we calc sum 5 and 6 and we put in a c out statement and we get 11 so that's that's an inline function and you can use it instead of macros with arguments um because you have to know how macros with arguments work we're going to use them in our C++ code a lot because UE4 uses them a lot. Whenever possible, however, um, 
a lot of people like to use inline functions over macros with arguments because you don't have to do the pound of fine and it's more like a regular function. And a normal function, when it's executed, um, it does what's called a jump instruction. It goes straight to the function and executes the function. Whereas an inline function is where the actual code is copied at the point of the function call and no jump is issued. So basically what's happening is when it reaches here, instead of jumping to a function here and then jumping back, it just copy and pastes the whole function here without having to actually copy and paste it manually. The, the compiler does that for you. So basically, um, it, it just makes things a little bit faster. So when you're looking for performance, when people say C++ is faster for a reason, this is one of those reasons that's a tiny bit faster. And so um, the, only, the only catch to this is their, their bodies must be in the header file. You can't make an inline function body inside, um, inside of your CPP files. And they're, prefer they're also preferred because macros create errors very easily um, if you miss an argument and macros are limited to one line so you can get um you can get problems with long macros uh unreal gets around that but it's still something to think about and um long macros are just very hard to debug so that is all the basics of variables macros and functions that I think you should need to know before we delve in a little deeper into some UE4 API code again. Now that we have a bit more intimate knowledge of um, global and local variables and macros and functions and most importantly header files. So I'm going to leave that off there and we will see you guys next time. So have a good day and remember Create your way.